Is it your belief that Borrelia is a rampant bacteria that is in a number of people, but only expresses itself when there is trauma, stress, a lowering of immune system, a period of unhealthy times, and then you begin to get Lyme symptoms, if untreated, become chronic Lyme? Yeah. Yeah. The answer is, I can say shortly, yes, yes. or I can explain a bit. Explain yeah, because, <laughs> because no, because we try. You know, I'm I, I'm extremely much under the radar of the of the official medicine because what we do, uh, what we do is a little bit. Uh, you know, the, what uh, what is he doing? This quack. Oh, I know. So, yeah, <laughs> but well, I tell who criticizes me. Please come to look. Just ask the patients who are in, a, in my clinic. You can have the list of patients. Ask them back home. So, well, then they begin to understand. Well, anyway, in Lyme, of course, it's not only in Lyme, Connecticut. I have been there, but it's interesting. I can talk a little bit more about this. But we have areas which are very similar here in Europe, too. And we have a lot of Lyme patients uh, who came to my clinic. Many, many. Well, that's one of my favorite diagnoses because we can help. Uh, here I can say in 100% we can help because they always get much better or even healed. Mm -hmm. We did research. We looked in toxicity and Lyme. And we found in these Lyme patients, we found a, in average, much higher heavy metal, especially lead, cadmium, mercury, low. And even more important, more interesting is we found in 25% of our Lyme stage three patients, we found a deficiency to detoxify the body. Mm. They had other either glutathione transferase lack, a genetic deficiency, or they have methyl transferase, uh, folate transferase lack. So they could not detoxify the body. The body didn't have the pathways. So they stored toxicity for years since, well, this is a genetic thing, which is since birth. And they start, 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 and then these bacteria, which everybody has, I, I can go into this later, everybody has in this area a confrontation with Lyme Borrelia bacteria, <laughs> everybody. So why do you get sick and the other one do, does not get sick? And these factors are which we have to, to work on. That's extremely in important, extremely important that we find the factors which the Borrelia in your body loves and then can get more, more uh, pathogenic. Yeah. You know. did, we have an area here in, in Switzerland, in Germany, on the River Rhine. Mm -hmm. It's very much uh, similar to, to this area where Lyme, Connecticut is, with the lakes, with the river, with the, the forests, and with the deer in the forest. And so it's very similar climate-wise too. And they, here there is an area where also in the towns that we have a lot of well, how, why is it more in towns than in the non-towns? But the, the ticks are more out in the forests, but the people in the towns, they get more sick. Why? Because they are infected anyway. And so now it gets very interesting. They did research and they looked in uh, on, on these villages, in the country villages, countryside villages, they went to the schools and they tested all the school children, healthy as can be, the little country boys and girls. So they tested for Lyme. And they tested forest workers and they tested farmers in this area along the River Rhine, which is very humid and, mm -hmm. and foresty. And they found 95% were in serum, in blood, 
positive for Lyme. So in New York, if you would bring them in to New York and they would have some whatever symptom and they would find, oh, you have Lyme state, this is Lyme state three, but they were healthy as can be. Hmm. You can't rely on lab findings mm -hmm. when you when it's about Borreliosis, uh, Lyme disease. You can't rely because you can be wrongly negative. Right. And 95% of these healthy people were wrongly positive on Lyme positive, uh, on Lyme finding. So and when I see my patients nowadays, they have something health problem, they have perhaps cognitive problems, they have joint problems, back problems, whatever, or fibromyalgia. They go to a doctor, they don't find anything because they look wrongly, they don't test toxically. They do, oh, in this case, it could be Lyme disease. They look for Lyme disease and they find, oh, you have Lyme. But 95% of these German farmers and forest children, they had Lyme too. They had the same finding, healthy as can be. They are sick by something else and they have positive Lyme findings. And then they get antibiotics. Mm. And there is the guideline. It's really the business of infectiology. Mm -hmm. You can have the guideline first. You give three three weeks a doxycycline and then rotzefine and whatever. And the patients they destroy their intestinal mucous membranes with and the bacteria. The dysbiosis comes up, and then the sickness really begins. I would say ninety percent of my Lyme 3 patients who were not successfully treated in the United States, they come to us, they are toxic or they have a severest dysbiosis due to the side effect of the antibiotics. Right. And when, when we treat this, Lyme disappears. Mm -hmm. And the co-infections. Yes, and other infections. Very often, in nearly 100% of these Lyme patients, we find several viruses, for example, Epstein-Barr, Cytomegalia, uh, Varicella, well, shingles, we find positive, very high levels. So that's what I meant. Diseases change. There is not just one bacteria mechanistically anymore. There is mm -hmm. always a multi-infection and a multi-toxicity. And if you balance all these things, which is a three to three weeks beginning, afterwards a several months treatment to really rebalance your body and the immune system, the symptoms disappear. You know, Lyme to me has always been fascinating because, of course, my father in the clinic here, we've seen so many as well. And you know, you've seen so many patients come through. To me, it's the ultimate expression of germ theory versus terrain theory. You know, when, when you throw a bunch of antibiotics, at, you know, which is germ theory, and just say, blow them, attack the germ, yet you make the environment worse, it usually, usually almost 100% does not work. Whereas if you go terrain theory and you start to change the environment to where the bacteria cannot persist, it usually works. It's a little bit slower, you know, a little bit longer process to change environment, but it's much more beneficial. And to me, this is the, the ultimate kind of look at which one really works in practice. You could say germ theory is the right one in Pasteur, you know, was correct and Enderline was it, but Bichamp really, but um this, you know, I think this is a, a, a big tenet, right? A biological medicine is terrain. You improve the inner milieu and you start to see better results, right? 100%. I agree 100%. Yeah. So, you know, Lyme is, is a fantastic diagnosis. It was really super invention. You have a test, which is always positive. You have something which you can treat against, but you treat against the wrong lab finding, and mm -hmm. then you destroy the patients, and the patients get a chronic sickness, so you have a permanent customer. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I know this is very cynic, 
<laughs> oh no, but not for the pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very nice if you invest in these pharmaceutical companies because they have someone for life now from something somewhat benign, a tick bite or some you know regular bacterial infection. 